Hi, welcome back to the Weekly Why. This week we have Parsha Devarim. This is the first book of the five books of Moses, uh, Deuteronomy. And this book, I mean, this really, a million and one things we can talk about. One of the things I want to talk about, though, is that this Tuesday, so right now it's Thursday, so five days from now, four or five days from now, we're going to be entering Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the month of B'Av, which is the saddest, most tragic, mournful time, a day of the Jewish uh, calendar. Uh, but what really, there's a real tie, an interesting tie in this week's Haftarah, the, uh, the reading from the, uh, the prophets that we read. So in this Haftarah, we read about, uh, from the book of Isaiah. So I want to start with a, with a story. Two old men uh, are in a doctor's office, and they're sitting beside each other, and they, and they're, you know, get talking, and it turns out that they really have the same, same affliction, same skin, little, you know, red splotches on their skin. So they get talking, and they say, oh, it sounds like we have the same thing. So one of them says, hey, you know, when you go into the doctor, find out what he says and, you know, tell me. So she says, sure. First guy goes in and the doctor says, oh, this is nothing at all. It's just a little, uh, little skin disorder, nothing to worry about. You know, put some aloe vera on it and, you know, it's nothing. He says, great. So he goes out and he says to the second man in the waiting room, he says, listen, the doctor said it's nothing at all, nothing to worry about. So the uh, second guy says, great. He goes into the doctor, and the doctor says to him, well, this is very serious, you know. It's a grave condition. You need surgery right away. And he says, but hold on. You just told the other guy that it's nothing. We have the same thing. What's going on here? And the doctor says, no, no. It may look like the same thing, but his is superficial. Yours is a really, really deep skin condition, and it's very deadly. So right, right off the bat, obviously what we're seeing here is that just because two things look to be superficially the same thing doesn't mean that they are. So in this week's Haftarah, we have the prophet Isaiah speaking as God or relaying a message from God, saying that, you know, telling the Jewish people, if their sins are like crimson, if they're deep red, they will be white like, like snow. And if their sins are, are red like dyed wool, they will be white like fleece. Talmud says that these two phrases refer to the first and second temple. In other words, the first temple, when the Jewish, well, it says here, when the Jewish people sin, when their sins are crimson, when they're dark red, they'll be like snow. And the second temple, the, the uh, Talmud says, in the second half of the sentence where God says, if your sins are like red fleece, they'll be like white fleece. Now, obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, but snow is much whiter than fleece. Fleece, if you've ever seen it, it's not really a white, it's like a yellow, it's like a jaundice, you know? Whereas snow is very white. So the question is, obviously, if we follow what the Talmud's saying here, the Talmud's saying is that the first people, the first Talmud, excuse me, the first temple, their sins would be like white snow. And the second temple, their sins would be like, like white fleece, which isn't very white at all. It's a yellow. So the question is, what were the people in the first temple doing that was clearly not as bad as what people were doing in the second temple? Now, what the Talmud tells us is that the first temple, people were murder adultery, idolatry, all sorts of things which we would perceive as really as bad as you can get. And in the second temple, what was it? You know, we've heard that it's sinat chinam, baseless hatred. The question is, why is that so much worse than what the people were doing in the first temple? People were committing murder, adultery, idolatry. What's worse than that? The lesson is this, is that in the first temple, people may have, like the first man, it may look bad. And it was bad, not to diminish adultery, idolatry, murder, of course not. But what it really is, is to say that these were temp succumbing to temptations, right? Idolatry, people worship an idol because they want the god of fertility, or the god of money, or the god of this or that. Same thing with adultery or idolatry, uh, or, or, you know, uh, murder, is that you kind of let your emotions get the power of you. It's not an intellectual or rational decision. And so in that, God says, yes, your insides, ultimately, it's still good, but you're just succumbing to something you shouldn't. Whereas in the second temple, in the second temple, what happened was that they were, you know, superficially doing the right thing. They were following mitzvahs, they were doing the right thing, but internally they were dead. What that means is that with that sinat chinam, if they missed the point of loving your fellow Jew, then they missed really the entire core message of the Torah, is that every Jew is responsible for another Jew, and every Jew's goal in life should be to come closer to the God, to strive to come closer to the God, and to really bring the Jewish people along with him in that growth. So what the Talmud's saying, and what Isaiah is saying, is that in the first temple period, right, these sins may have been as red as crimson, as red, deep red as you can possibly think, but ultimately, they were superficial, 
and the Jewish people's sins could be wiped clean. It could be as white as snow, with repentance, of course. But the second temple, although it looked just as bad, it was much deeper, right? The people may have been doing everything good, but ultimately they were doing everything for the wrong reason. They had no intention of coming close to God. They had no intention of caring for the Jewish people. And although they were doing things that were, you know, bringing all, doing all the commandments and looking very religious and holy, ultimately they're missing the entire point. So obviously the takeaway lesson for us is to say, be less concerned about physical appearances. Obviously, striving for commandment and growth in observance of the Torah is extremely important. But perhaps the underlying message of that is to say, know why you're doing it. You are doing it not to look religious. You're not doing it not to look good or to look really from. You're doing it to come closer to God and to bring the Jewish people along with you. And if that's the lesson, if that's the lesson that we can take from this week's Parsha and from Tisha B'Av, and I think that's a very good first step. Best wishes. Shabbat Shalom. God bless.